the renowned Super Heavy Booster 12 has made an unexpected move. Could this signal its retirement to a museum or hint at a potential reflight? Meanwhile, SpaceX has successfully completed the full stacking of Flight 7 hardware. What developments lie ahead for this mission? In other news, Rocket Lab has presented proposals for the Mars Sample Return Program, challenging NASA's recent incremental updates. How will NASA respond? Find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Nearly three months have passed since the Super Heavy Booster 12, or B-12 for short, made a jaw-dropping return to Starbase, caught effortlessly by the Megazilla arm. This unprecedented feat sparked excitement and speculation about the future of B-12. After its October flight, B-12 was transported back to the production site's Mega Bay on January 15th. But before that, by October 27th, it had been moved to the Rocket Garden joining inactive prototypes like Booster 4 and Ship 20. At the time, many assumed B-12 would be left there, much like its predecessors, signaling the end of its active journey. Surprisingly, on the morning of January 9th, B-12 was rolled back to the Mega Bay. This unexpected move mirrors the situation with B-4 back in March of 2024, when it was scrapped shortly after a similar relocation. Adding to the speculation, B-14.1, a piece of hardware commonly used for testing with the chopsticks, was brought into the high bay. This development raised questions about B-12's stand being replaced by B-14.1's older stand. If true, it could mark the end of B-12's operational life. This potential outcome aligns with earlier predictions. With Starship transitioning to its version 2 design, it's only natural for the Super Heavy boosters to follow suit. A V-1 booster like B-12 faces increasingly limited opportunities for flight. Meanwhile, B-15 has completed construction and testing, and B-16 and 17 are in progress, positioning them for upcoming missions. These developments further diminish the likelihood of B-12 returning to flight, making its retirement or scrapping a logical conclusion. There is still hope for a more symbolic resolution. If B-12 is removed from the Mega Bay intact, it could either return to the Rocket Garden or be preserved elsewhere, standing as a lasting tribute to its remarkable achievements. Such a move would honor its pivotal role and cement its place in SpaceX history. For now, B-12's fate remains uncertain. Whether it emerges from the Mega Bay whole or in pieces will determine its ultimate destiny. Will it be dismantled, or will it find a permanent home as a museum piece? The space community can only speculate, inviting everyone to share their predictions and hopes for this iconic booster. Beyond B-12's movements, Starbase is alive with activity surrounding S-33. Recently loaded with simulated Starlink satellites and equipped with a catching system, S-33 is primed for the next phase of its journey. On the morning of January 9th, just before the movements of B-12 and B-14.1, S-33 made its official departure from Mega Bay 2. After over three weeks of inspections, it was rolled directly to the launch pad, reaching its destination in under two hours. Once at the pad, systems like S-33's lift pins were deployed to connect to the chopsticks. The aft flap was also extended, and an intriguing decal featuring the Megazilla symbol was spotted near the payload door. By late afternoon on the same day, S-33 had been fully stacked onto B-14, marking the first integration of Flight 7 hardware. This milestone was achieved less than three months after Flight 5 and less than two months after Flight 6, highlighting SpaceX's rapid progress as obstacles continue to be addressed. With the integration complete, SpaceX is now ready to move forward with the wet dress rehearsal. Initially scheduled for the 10th and the 11th between 5 in the morning to 5 in the evening central, the timing has been adjusted to a more convenient 10 in the morning to 10 in the evening window on the 10th. 10 10 10. Once this test is successfully completed, Flight 7 will be set for its planned launch on January 13th. Adding to the anticipation, the FAA has issued a new notice to air missions for the ship's landing site in the Indian Ocean. The updated schedule now spans from the 13th to the 17th UTC, clearing up previous uncertainties about possible scheduling conflicts between the FAA and SpaceX. The earlier NOTAM for the Super Heavy landing site had been set only for the 14th, a detail that appeared to be an error. This correction ensures that Flight 7 remains on track for its highly anticipated launch on the 13th. In related news, 
Blue Origin's new Glen has also encountered some schedule changes. What were once rumored delays have now been confirmed, with weather conditions being the primary cause. Blue Origin shared the update on their X account, New Glen launch update, we're shifting our NG1 launch date to no earlier than January 12th due to a high sea state in the Atlantic, where we hope to land our booster. Our three-hour window remains the same, opening Sunday at 1 a.m. Eastern or 6 a.m. UTC. This adjustment has also been reflected on the company's website. New Glenn's payload stages were recently mated and returned to the launch pad, where they were vertically stacked. However, weather forecasts for this week indicate unfavorable conditions for launch operations. This presents an additional challenge for Blue Origin as they plan to recover the booster via a drone ship in the Atlantic. Successfully executing such a complex operation during poor weather on a debut flight is a significant undertaking. While the weather-related delay is understandable, Blue Origin's history of postponements has led many to approach their timelines with skepticism. Even with the current January 12th schedule, there is no guarantee that New Glenn's launch will proceed as planned. This uncertainty leaves the question open, which will launch first, New Glenn 1 or Starship Flight 7? The unpredictable factors surrounding both missions invite further speculation. As the space community eagerly awaits these launches, one thing is clear. The coming days are set to bring plenty of excitement and milestones to celebrate. Share your predictions for the fate of B-12 and the progress of Flight 7 and the debut of New Glenn in the comments section down below. Stay tuned as we continue to track these developments and bring you the latest updates on the ever-evolving journey of space exploration. As we look forward to these exciting launches, there's no doubt that space exploration is a vast endeavor with developments unfolding across multiple fronts, such as the Mars Sample Return Program. The MSR project, once heralded as a monumental step for space exploration, has faced mounting challenges, including skyrocketing costs, now estimated at 11 billion US dollars, and significant delays that have pushed the anticipated return date to as late as 2040. In light of these issues, NASA held a conference to explore alternative approaches. Two primary options emerged from the discussion the use of sky crane technology or a heavy lander. Both strategies aim to cut costs and expedite the sample return process. However, the proposed savings are minimal at best. The revised costs for these options range from five to seven billion, at least, only slightly less than the original projection. What's more, they remain well above NASA's initial estimate of $3 billion. The timeline remains uncertain as well. Although the revised target for a sample return is set for 2035, NASA has admitted that meeting this deadline is contingent on congressional funding, which would require an additional $300 million annually. Neither of these options offer a satisfactory solution to the twin challenges of cost and schedule. Worse yet, the delays put NASA at risk of falling behind international competitors, mainly China, which has set an ambitious 2028 goal for its own Mars sample return mission. To make matters worse, NASA plans to spend another year and a half studying these options, meaning no decision will be made until mid-2026. This delay could seriously undermine the United States' leadership in space exploration. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, Rocket Lab has proposed a bold alternative. The company suggests revisiting the National Space Science Administration project, offering a solution that it claims will be both faster and cheaper than NASA's current options. Specifically, Rocket Lab proposes leveraging new technologies developed by both their team and other private sector organizations. Their approach mirrors NASA's original vision, using a lander to collect samples from a rover, launching the samples into Mars orbit via an ascent vehicle, and then transferring them to a a return capsule destined for Earth. Rocket Lab's Vice President Richard French confidently outlined their plan. We think we're the organization that can bring these Mars samples home faster and cheaper. Our architecture, as proposed to NASA, was to bring samples back for less than $4 billion and as early as 2031. 
This proposal not only represents a significant cost reduction, but also accelerates the timeline, providing a critical opportunity to outpace China in the race for Mars. French further emphasized the need for NASA to embrace commercial competition. If NASA wants to show leadership, it's to lean into commercial capability and be bold and compete. We're pretty hopeful with what the new administration is going to bring and how they respond to this set of recommendations. Rocket Lab's stance underscores their frustration with the inefficiency of NASA's current plans and their belief that private sector innovation holds the key to overcoming these challenges. The commercialization of the MSR project indeed appears more practical than NASA's traditional methods. By reducing costs and expediting the timeline, Rocket Lab's proposal ensures that the United States retains its competitive edge in space exploration. Moreover, Rocket Lab has a proven track record of innovation and success in the aerospace sector, making their confidence in this venture particularly compelling. What do you think about Rocket Lab's proposal? Could this commercial approach be the key to the future of space exploration? Let's start the conversation and share our thoughts while we wait to see how NASA responds to this exciting alternative. As always, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.